Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to PBTV. I'm Stu. Uh, a few technical difficulties to start the stream off, but we are back up and running. Uh, and we are here today uh, with the M90 series. Um, been very, very popular recently. Um, there are just an astronomic choice. So I've just brought one out. Um, we'll have a little discussion about it. And I've brought one of the vectors out just to show... Um, that the rail system and I brought a few other bits just to show how um, compatible these things are with other things on the market. If you do have any questions about the uh, Golden Eagle, the M90 series, binary triggers, anything like that, uh, just let us know. Uh, we'll flash it up on screen and we'll talk about it. Uh, so this is the um, M906E. So there are a few different models and variants and things like that. Uh, so the M90 series is a Golden Eagle um, platform that has a what's called a Falcon Fire Control system in it. Uh, this is the number six in the model, uh, and I think the number uh, represents the receiver style, and then the uh, suffix number, so the E on this one, is the rail length and the stock. Uh, there's various different versions, 908, FG, all sorts of different ones, and all that gives you is a choice between different rail lengths, slightly different rails, uh, different stocks, collapsible stocks, skeletal stocks, uh, the standard club stock like this that's um, very adjustable, really, really cool. Uh, some sliding stocks that go all the way down the receiver that have little cutouts, uh, and some of the newer ones have uh, mock skeletonization in there uh, and look very, very cool. For a budget sort of entry-level platform, I can see these being very, very popular with absolutely any player. Uh, Reaper on YouTube, straight in with the questions. Uh, what are the build materials? So it is a um, mostly alloy and uh, metal construction. So the receiver is metal, the rail is uh, metal, all the accessories are uh, a steel or an aluminium. The stock... Uh, and pistol grip and iron sights are polymer, but they are, I think they're the sort of a, a glass fibre polymer, so they are extremely strong and durable uh, and very, very, very well put together. There's very little wobble or flex with it, um, been put together very, very well for something that you expect uh, to be uh, sort of your first um, platform or something like that. So I'll go through um, a few of its features. We have covered one of these before, but uh, we, there's just a absolute mass of models uh, hitting the website very, very soon. So we thought we'd come out and talk about them again. So it does have the 14 mil on the front of it. Uh, so you can put any of your accessories or anything like that on it. Uh, another question off YouTube. Does it uh, take standard M4 magazines? I expected this question. So it does come with a 300 round high cap that you can fit, uh, that you fill from the top. Uh, so any M4 magazine that is a standard high cap, uh, you fill from the top and you wind it from the bottom. But I did bring out an EPM magazine. So any of your standard AEG M4 mags, it will just click straight in. 90% uh, of um, sort of platforms like this are compatible with all AEG sort of M4 magazines. Um, whether or not you want a, a big drum mag, a mega mag, a box mag, anything like that, they're all compatible. So I brought an EPM out very specifically expecting that question just to show that they are all functional. But in the box, it does come with the 300 round high cap that you can just wind at the bottom and you're good to go. Again, with these, um, we see, I've seen it a lot on sites whilst playing is when people aren't used to high caps or how they function, and everything like that, make sure the mag stays vertical when you wind it. If you spin it upside down and wind it like this, you won't get um, the full benefits of the spring system inside. So make sure the mag stays vertical and you'll get the uh, you get the most shots out of your winds uh, and you'll still be able to stick into the fight for longer. So as I was saying, it does have the 14 mil. There are various different flash hiders that the different models come with. This one does have threads and stuff on it, but as far as we're aware, there is no accessory to go on there. It is just a Fort Lux uh, thing with the Double Eagle platform. Coming back, so we do have an M-Lock rail system on this. All the different models do have an... Oh, Reaper. Uh, have you had a play with it? I've uh, used these on the range. I've not had one at a game day, but I've uh, put plenty of rounds down and tested the uh, fire control system out a lot um, on the range. The binary trigger is awesome. The programmability is awesome. Uh, I'll come on to the, the features and uh, what that thing's capable of and the reason why I think these are going to be super, super popular. And uh, I see them quite a few times on sites. But the rail itself, all the models are M-Lock. There is just a slight difference in um, fixture and length. So this one is about sort of five to six inches. You get some that are 12 
longer, uh, shorter, various different ones, 6, 12, 13 inch, I think is the biggest one, but they are all M-lock. So you've basically got a slight choice in um, a, a look and length. And that is uh, doubled with the back. So you have the club stock on it at the moment, the almost CTR style, very thin, uh, streamlined, low profile. Very, very good for, for outdoors, especially if you've got big gangly arms like me. You can throw it all the way out and you can be uh, comfortable when you've got this shouldered. The skeletonized stock, again, really, really good for CQB. You don't lose too much um, battery space with the skeletonized stock. You still get a full stock tube. It is just two bars that come down and sit on the side of the receiver. And then when you pull it out, it gets to the full length as well. Again, if you've got a normal size battery, there is no MOSFET or anything inside the stock tube. So you do have plenty of battery space in there for a decent sized battery and you'll be able to run all day. Along with the sort of fire control unit and with it being uh, an electronic system inside, you're not going to have that much draw on your batteries as well. So your batteries are going to last a long, long time um, over the physical metal on metal contacts you get with a standard version 2 gearbox. Uh, so you're going to get a little bit more life out of it. You're going to be able to stay in game longer uh, and get a few more rounds downrange before having to swap out or... Um, be a bit more frugal with your uh, shots. So as I did say, it does come with the high cap, but it is compatible with any other uh, M4 magazine. Um, but yeah, so control-wise as well, uh, you do have uh, on this model, you, this is uh, very, very, very ambidextrous. The other models are sort of more right-handed dominant, but again, uh, depending on which model you pick, you get more and more controls on it. So you have a ambidextrous fire selector, that you can see moving on both sides. And you will see there is a slight cutout on it there. What that allows is when you have got it there, you're not gonna knock it. So the cutout is there for your finger. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier and you're not gonna knock it onto semi or uh, full auto if it's on safe, etc. Uh, what RPS are you getting on 11.1? Uh, I've not tested it on a level one because I wouldn't really recommend it. Recommend it um, purely for pre-engagement. Seven fours are perfectly fine. Uh, and to be honest, with the binary trigger on this, you're probably going to stay away from full auto. Um, you can almost sort of beat the system a little bit with the binary trigger. Uh, I'll, in fact, I'll go into that quickly now. So um, the there is full instructions in the box of how to change it if you want to burst or anything like that. But what we are on about by binary trigger is when you're in semi-auto like this, it will fire a BB, fire a BB, fire a BB, fire a BB. So rather than being fire, 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 you're getting a shot with every movement of the trigger. Please be aware that I've been to some sites that consider that the same as full auto, so you are not allowed to use them in some semi-auto only sites. But again, uh, semi-auto is probably slightly better for... Um, battery life than full auto and everything like that. You're not having to permanently uh, put power down or anything like that. Um, so you are maybe gonna get probably a little bit more battery life out of a binary trigger. Again, with it being uh, an electronic trigger, you're not having that metal on metal contact. You've got less resistance. You've got less draw from your battery. Uh, you're gonna be able to stay in the game longer. So if you are wanting one of these, um, the binary triggers are amazing uh, as long as you're allowed to use them. It's just one of them ones. If you, if you go to a site that is semi-auto only, expect them to say that they might not be allowed to be used. Again, if you are allowed to use them, it's, uh, it's just a bit of a bonus. But all it means is that you are getting two shots technically for each trigger pull. So it will fire a BB, fire a BB, fire a BB. And again, doing something like this, you're going to get a lot of rounds downrange. In full auto, again, it is fully programmable. You can put burst systems in it all the way up to five rounds. Again, this is really, really good for uh, conserving ammunition. You don't want to be dumping tons of rounds down range and not being able to hear someone shout hit that's in a bush. So put a burst down, wait a second, put a burst down, wait, put a burst down. It just gives you much more control. Um, you're not going to just burn through your BBs way too quickly. So the, all the functions on this have just been designed to keep you in, uh, keep you on the field for longer uh, and have a really good time. Uh, Reaper, is it lightweight? Yes. Uh, compared to some of the uh, full metal builds that I've uh, handled before, this thing is, I think it's just a smidge over two kilos, which sounds like a lot, but in um, platforms like this, it's, it's really not. I've, I've known some that are three and a half to four kilos, etc. Um, but yeah, uh, they've, they've tried to save a little bit of weight with the sort of alley uh, CNC rail. The metal receiver is uh, a little bit more solid. And again, you've got a plastic uh, stock and a uh, polymer um, 
pistol grip as well. So where they've been able to save weight, they have. And again, this is one of the shorter ones. So some of the long ones are going to be a little bit heavier. But again, most of the weight is back here. So when it is shoulders, it is nicely balanced, etc. Um, I will point out as well, this does come as standard on Dean's. So again, it's another positive or a pro for um, power consumption. You're going to have less resistance. It is the better personally it's the better battery connector um they stay together longer they're not as um prone to movement or wobble as the tamiyas are uh, and you've got less resistance through them don't worry though if you have already got a platform you've already got batteries etc in the box you are provided with a deans to tamiya conversion so you can still run it for a little bit until you either get new batteries or you can swap out your current batteries to deans batteries um you also have very very cool uh, so this comes with a rotary hop as standard. So again, you'll hear me um, chat about it all the time that the rotary hops are very, very good and very, very stable. So once this thing's set, it's not going to shift, fun uh, move or uh, foul up when BB is passing through it. Some of the other hops, maybe a gear one or um, the slider ones or anything like that, there's a very, very slight chance that after quite a few BBs, maybe halfway through a day, and you've put 2,000 BBs downrange, they might slightly adjust. And again, it might throw your um, trajectory off, up, down, uh, and just when that crucial shot comes in, it's where it always happens. So the rotary hops uh, are much more stable. Once they are locked in place, the BB, the actual physical um, BB going through isn't going to sort of knock them out. And again, uh, it does lock back. So once you have finished adjusting, hit the paddle on the side, or you can hit the paddle on this side and it drops the bolt forward and you're good to go. Again, if you're not too sure about how hop systems work or anything like that, just ask someone uh, whilst you're at a site, even if it's the, the Marshall chronoing or anyone like that, the, most airsofters are more than happy to help you and make sure it's set properly because there's nothing more infuriating than seeing a BB go and then it sort of float up uh, towards the end of your range and miss the target. Once you've got these things dialed, they are uh, really, really nice and accurate. Uh, Kit Knight, uh, when can you expect the AKS 74Us uh, by Simon back in stock? Uh, currently here, I'm not too sure because I'm not on my computer, but uh, I'll try and find your comment afterwards uh, and see what we can do. Again, um, the quickest way to find out if something is back in stock is hit the email back in stock button because waiting to ask us uh, is way slower than just waiting for that um, to hit. Uh, so as soon as if you hit that little blue button that says email back in stock as soon as they hit our warehouse an email will be sent to you and you can follow the link and get straight to it on the website uh, waiting to ask us it, it, we, we just have to give you a rough idea and to be honest with deliveries and everything like that um, they are spaced out through the week we get deliveries every single day of many many pallets but it's just um, when certain bits are coming etc so a few other bits on this for people that are just joining us. You do have uh, polymer flip-up sights. There's no button or anything on these ones. They are just uh, detent, so you can drop them up as and when you go. Again, you have rail all the way across the top. So I was on about with the uh, Vector Optics. Simply clicks on, and you can lock it in place. Again, really, really cool. If this was a, a CQB setup, I'd be very, very, very happy with it. Uh, probably put a magnifier on there as well uh, and be good to go for indoors and outdoors. Uh, a few people just joining as well. Uh, it does have the 14mm counterclockwise thread at the front, so you can put your tracer units, you put all your accessories on there that you want, uh, and with this being such a small uh, little platform, it's going to be a little compact machine. Uh, so uh, I'll finally cover with the... Um, fire control unit again so in this is what's called the falcon fire control unit for people that have just joined uh, and didn't catch me going through it so this has an electronic trigger system unit um and a it gives you the option to have a binary trigger or an adjust an adjustable burst system in it. So what that means is even on safe, you can see that the trigger still moves because there are no contacts in there. It is an electronic trigger. So whilst you're on uh, semi, you can set this, set this up to be single shot and it will simply fire one at a time. Uh, another question off uh, YouTube, is the stock adjustable? Yes, so there's a little button here and you can click it back into, I think there's four or five different positions. Again, if this stock isn't something that you're a fan of, it is completely, um, um, you could throw any other airsoft stock on it is what I'm on about if you wanted a PTS or anything like that. But with the M90 series, there are various different models. So you can have ones that have skeleton stocks, longer rails, different rails, slightly different stocks, etc. So if you don't like this specific one, there will be one out there for you that you will probably quite like, whether or not it's the skeleton stock one, something a bit longer, etc. 
So the trigger, again, the binary trigger that you can set up so it will fire a BB, fire a BB, fire a BB, fire a BB. It is uh, sort of beating that semi-auto rule that some sites have in place. So if you are thinking of getting one and you run predominantly at a site that is semi-auto only, please uh, speak to them first and ask if binary triggers are okay because you don't want to get hold of one. Take it to a site and they say, no, sorry, you can't use that because it is a lot, lot faster and you do get a hell of a lot of BBs downrange by almost circumventing a, a rule that they've put in place. Again, it, if they don't allow it, they don't allow it, but what um, it will allow you to do if you are allowed it, especially outdoors, uh, you'll have a little bit longer of battery life because uh, if you are doing that over full auto, you're going to have a, a better uh, better time of it. Uh, Reaper on YouTube, what's the prefer preferred BB weight? Uh, with a standard platform like this, 2.5s, 2.8s, you're going to be perfectly fine with. Uh, the hop in here is probably going to be, pref uh, you're going to prefer to use 0.25s um, and you, you're probably going to get the best sort of average uh, range to sort of speed to target out of that one. And again, with the amount of BBs going down it uh, with the binary trigger, you're going to probably want to stick to something that's a bit more budget friendly than the uh, more, more, um, vicious ones and again with the two fives you're going to get a decent um range and accuracy out of this it does have a 6.08 in a barrel uh patient unknown again uh if that was full metal uh, i'd have one this is full metal so the receiver's metal the rail's metal uh the only polymer bits on this are the uh, iron sights the stock and the pistol grip uh, so again, you can swap the stock out if you want to anything else, uh, or you can look at the other models and they are all slightly different, but they are all full metal receiver and rail. Uh, so, oh, another question on Facebook, uh, new to the sport. If it were, is it worth getting as a noob, uh, being looking at the spec edge, Daniel Spence at Daniel defense at the moment. Um, yeah, between these, I think if I was starting uh, airsoft today i'd be probably looking at a spec rounds edge or one of these uh, and it's purely that binary trigger uh, having played with one on the range as long as you are allowed to use a binary trigger at your site uh, and you're not a, a semi-auto only site i definitely uh, recommend having a look at one of these you've got an astronomical choice when it comes to rail length stock style anything like that so the uh, double eagle uh, M90 series is sort of the, the prefix and then there's various different uh, numbers that represent the receiver style and then the letters afterwards are uh, rail length and style of stock so if there isn't if this isn't quite the one that you're after there's many many others out there and again with it being the M4 uh, platform you've got loads of options for other bits as well patient unknown box it up well uh i think we currently have uh 10 to 12 different variants online so you'll have to find out which one you want first uh but if that's everything for today this has been the uh double eagle uh m90 series sort of overview we have covered one before but with the amount of um variants coming out uh onto the website uh, we wanted to show it off again and explain the binary trigger system in a bit more detail uh, and just show off that if this isn't the one that you're after, there are absolutely tons of options out there, whether or not it's rail stock or anything. And for a starter, I, I probably wouldn't look anywhere else. It would it would definitely be between this and the Spectrum Rounds Edge, to be honest. But if that's everything for today, uh, it's great talking to you. I love it when uh, loads of people drop in questions. It makes my life a lot easier uh, but we will be back again tomorrow about 4 p.m if there's anything you want us to look at by all means drop us a message on instagram we'll throw your suggestions to the top of the list rather than just uh, picking something off the shelf uh, and we like talking about you what you want to talk about but if that's everything for today i'll see you in a bit